sky, guys. All right, back on the road again. Uh, sun is coming out over the green mountains of Vermont. Here on this uh, has been a gloomy morning, gloomy winter morning in middle of October. It is Thursday, October. 12th, uh, 2023, uh, already had my rant about, uh, October 12th, my broken record rant about October 12th, but, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I've obviously cannot exercise the judgment to keep my mouth shut about that little kerfuffle going over there in uh, Israel and Gaza this week. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this a few days ago and got all of this like, like dude, you, you don't know anything about the history or the politics of uh, Gaza and Israel. Well, for number one, I probably know as much or more about it as 99% uh, of Americans. I mean, I was eight-year-old in 1967. But uh, one more time, I am not a student of history okay and I'm not much of a student of politics or history I am de I study collapse and you cannot be a collapsitarian without being uh, fascinated by what is what is unfolding over there in the Gaza Strip, it's, it's the no shit Sherlock, uh, the no shit Sherlock uh, headline uh, that Sancho Panza could have predicted. I have uh, 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 okay, guys. One more time. Any time I talk about this kerfuffle over in Israel, I have no more interest in, in playing the blame game, uh, whose fault it is, uh, who deserved what. I have no more interest in the uh, politics and the history of this kerfuffle than any other one of our fellow earthlings on this planet gives a damn about these uh, about these warmongering bloodthirsty savages called humans okay i have no i have virtually no interest and going back to 1967, going back 2,000 years of Middle Eastern history, that place has been a shithole, has been a violent bloodbath uh, epicenter of humans being humans. Okay? I, I have no interest. Don't, you don't need to write me. Uh, because you think uh, one side of that is more moral or more bloodthirsty than the other. They're all a bunch uh, of goddamn immoral, bloodthirsty savages. And for the uh, average citizen of Palestine, uh, they are, uh, whether or not uh, they individually are immoral, bloodthirsty, uh, whatevers. Uh, they are clueless moron breeders. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I did about 
uh, two minutes of homework, the population of the Gaza Strip in 1990 was 650,000 people in an area, uh, what, 25 miles by, it's 140 square miles. It's 650,000 people. Uh, in 1990, the Gaza Strip was in complete overshoot, and now they have tripled the population. You have nobody to blame uh, but the breeders, the clueless moron breeders. To this day, the Gaza Strip has a higher birth rate than Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Two-thirds of the population of the Gaza Strip is under 30 years old and they keep breeding like rabbits. They get 80% of their food from Israel. They import 80% of, of Gazans, 66% uh, of whom are under 30 years old, half of them pregnant, uh, get 80% of their food from Israel, and Israel itself is in overshoot. Wouldn't surprise me if Israel imports uh, over half of its food. So the, these people in Gaza, and you can sit here and talk till you're blue in the face about history and politics and blame. What is fascinating to me is, is, is I am a collapsitarian who studies overpopulation and overshoot and we have an absolute classic setup of what's going on over there in Gaza Strip so uh, it sounds like one half of the population one million people who never should have been born in the Gaza Strip uh, my, my definition of never, well, no human should ever have been born on this planet. My definition, when you hear me say a human who never should have been born, that is any human that is born when their shithole country is already in overshoot. If one person in, in a country uh, is dependent on foreign aid for their food, they are in overshoot. So, the definition of a, well, other than the, you know, the deeper in the onion definition of a human who never should have been born, who is me, you, and any other human on the planet, because the whole goddamn human race should never have been born. But, but here we are, but that is my definition of a human who never should have been born. Uh, how many uh, of these pregnant women in Gaza today are 100% dependent on foreign aid food handouts to eat and to feed their children? And of course, uh, uh, over there in Gaza, I, I mean, it's it's food. They're they're uh, they're pretty much 100% dependent uh, on their overlords in, in Israel for their food, for their water, for their electricity, which I'm assuming includes their internet and cell phone coverage and uh, I'm almost sure they're fossil fuels and so uh, you 
know, I, I, I have no clue what those clueless morons, uh, those terrorists, that's exactly what Hamas is. They're a bunch of bloodthirsty, savage terrorists. I, I finally found myself agreeing word for word with Joe Biden. Call them what they are. They're bloodthirsty, savage terrorists. You can uh, talk to your blue in the face whether they were justified in doing what they did. Uh, but justified, not justified, I don't give a damn. I'm not looking. I, 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 I am absolutely flabbergasted how somebody who is virtually 100% dependent uh, on their food, their water, their electricity, we'll call it their internet, their cell phone service, and their fossil fuels would would have done what those idiots did a, a few days ago. It, it would be like uh, Sancho Panza uh, going up trying to kick a pit bull's ass. Uh, but anyway, they did what they did. And, and they set up this absolutely fascinating uh, wh where we're going to be able to watch in, in, in real time uh, a, a snapshot of the future. What it looks like when, when a country in, in absolute violent overshoot, which uh, the, the Gaza Strip is probably the most unsustainable overshot uh, spot on planet Earth. Uh, and now, what do you think the number one headline on Yahoo News today is? Uh, about how ordinary Gazan citizens are in an absolute panic the, the, the panic uh, is full-blown over there, uh, as it should be, uh, as, as grocery stores. There will be nothing left uh, on a grocery store shelf by the end of the day that uh, the, these folks, 2.3 million people uh, today, are in absolute uh, panic for their lives as they should be uh, because they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Uh, you know, I lose my internet for uh, 10 minutes and I act like my life has fallen apart. Uh, now, the one thing I don't understand is, is, is why... Uh, Israel is continuing to bomb uh, Gaza. I do wish they would cut that out, but it's probably on, on one level, I guess anybody uh, who, who dies in a missile attack uh, in Gaza this week uh, is just it, on, on one level. Uh, compared to what's coming is probably on one level a mercy killing. Uh, all they have to do is do what they've done. Turn off the food, turn off the water, turn off the electricity, turn off the internet, turn off the cell phones, turn off the, uh, the fossil fuels, and shut the border down. Don't let anybody in or out of there and lay siege and sit back. Uh, I, I don't know why Israel needs to send one more missile over there. Th 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 they've done what they need to do, and, and we and the rest of us. Now, of course, it, it's going to be hard with you, you know, with no electricity and no internet and cell phone and whatnot to get you know to get news out of Gaza, <clears throat> and of course, any news that manages to come out of Gaza is going to be, uh, is going to be, uh,
to just uh, absolute propaganda. Uh, you're not going to be able to believe one word uh, from any side over there because nobody can just report objectively. It would take a doomer to be over there and just reporting objectively. Uh, it's going to be as horrible as it's going to be. We have the greatest case study of uh, you know what it's going to look like and how people are going to react in the face of collapse. Now, I, I guess one thing with Gaza that is going to be a little bit different a little bit different than the way it's going to be playing out all over the planet is that I guess they can't leave. That it's just going to be a, a localized bloodbath and, and they're not, so you're not going to have 2.3 million uh, war refugees fleeing Gaza. I mean obviously uh, if, if they were allowed to uh, get, get their asses out of there, uh, Gaza would be empty within a week if they had freedom just to get the hell out of there. So it's, uh, th that part is going to be a little bit different for the, the rest of the planet, but eventually there is nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So uh, what, what happens in Gaza over the uh, next you know, week to six months uh, is going to be an absolute perfect snapshot to what collapse is going to look like. Uh, anybody trying to understand what overshoot and collapse, what collapse does to a society and overshoot, <clears throat> if you can just put away <coughs> your little uh, uh, all of this absolutely pointless debate about blame history and politics and, and, and try to view this uh, from the perspective of uh, I don't know any other earthling we share this planet with or from you know a space alien who has no dog in this fight no dog in this fight whatsoever I have no dog in in this fight. No dog uh, in, in, in this fight over there uh, in uh, Gaza today. And so, since I have no dog in this fight, I, I I have the freedom to look at this from someone who studies the collapse of an overshot society. And let me see if I can make some predictions. But, but you know, it's throwing off the predictions is, is the, the, these damn Israeli, you know, keep bombing the place. I, I, I wish uh, they, they would stop the bombing immediately so us doomers, us uh, chroniclers of the collapse can, can sit here and watch what it's going to look like. Uh, so, if the population of Gaza was well, I, I mean, I don't know what what is the poppy what is the sustainable population of Gaza of uh, what twenty five by six miles or whatever that is? What is the uh, what is a sustainable population of a 140 square mile uh, hot desert, which is you know every year going to become uh, more and more uninhabitable? 
uh, with no help from Israel, uh, what is the sustainable population uh, of humans, meaning how many humans living in the Gaza Strip would be able to support their food, water, and energy needs? Uh, how many people could live in that 140 square miles and and have all of the natural resources and food and water and energy everything so where they're not dependent on uh, on handouts on outside handouts my guess is and I'm just pulling this number pretty much out of you know where 140 square miles Let, let's be real you know right now the population density is 5,500 per square kilometer and of those 5,500, what, about 4,000 of them are under the age of 30. I don't even know what that is for square mile. Probably, my, I don't know, between seven and 8,000. Uh, so let's call it, I'm thinking, 100 people. Uh, so 140 square miles, 140 square miles times 100, come on, 14,000. The sustainable population of the Gaza Strip is 14,000 people. Sounds about right. 14,000 people should be living uh, in the Gaza Strip not 2.3 million and so logic tells me that if uh, if Israel just goes in there and turns off uh, the food and the water and the power and let and lets the people of Gaza figure out how to uh, do that for themselves at the end of a year, the population of Gaza, as it should be, should be about 14,000 people. But uh, for me saying that, uh, what am I? What am I, guys? Am I a racist? Am I anti-Palestinian? Uh, am I anti-Jew? which is not a race. You know, I, I love this uh, when, you know, what am I? For stating the fact that uh, 2.3 million people crammed into an area the size of Gaza Strip is completely unsustainable. It, they, there's, they have no business having 2.3 million people uh, in, 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 in that strip of land. No business whatsoever. Which is why they're not going to have 2.3 million people. And so come back in a year. <clears throat> this is for uh, all, all of you uh, people just going down the uh, collapse rabbit hole. I want you to come back on October 12th well, whenever, what was the date? When, what, what was it, the 8th or the 7th? What was the actual day? A comeback, you know, if it was the, if, if that happened, it was Saturday. What was, uh, anyway, I think that might have been the 7th. Come back on October 7th and uh, look at the population of the Gaza Strip. And you will have a pretty good idea of what uh, the collapse heading everybody's way is going to look like. You'll have a pretty good snapshot of what uh, the collapse of global industrial civilization is going to look like. Uh, a 
my guess is the population of the Gaza Strip, well, it depends on how long that Israel can lay siege. If, if Israel can just stick to its guns and not bow to, uh, to pressure, and they, and, and they, six months, if they stay true to their siege, my guess is the population of uh, Gaza Strip is going to be under one million uh, within a year. And good Lord, five years from now, I don't know. Uh, but it will be interesting to watch. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't expect very many people on the planet who have no dog in this fight uh, whatsoever are going to be able to uh, follow Don Juan Matusa's advice to get beyond the place of no pity. This is, uh, this is an example of my uh, Carlos Castaneda training, getting to the place beyond no pity and putting your outrage, your moral outrage, your blame game, all of that human crap that no other species of earthling gives a shit about. Take all of that shit, uh, flush it down the toilet, and take an opportunity to, to study the, uh, the most classic example of uh, collapse of an overshot society. And uh, I will uh, try to be keeping my mouth shut uh, about this unfolding kerfuffle the best I can, but uh, don't count on it. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your enjoy your lumber mill. Well, you still can, uh, and be very careful getting too dependent on somebody else for your food, water, electricity, and all the rest of it, because. Ask anybody in the Gaza Strip, that shit can go bye-bye any day. Any day. So, treat every day like it's your last. One more uh, send-off to uh, our good buddy, <coughs> Michael Dowd. Never know. You never know when you wake up every morning whether you're going to wake up the next day. Use death as your advisor. That is another Don Juan Matus lesson. Learn to use death as your advisor. And if you use death as your advisor, as Michael Dowd would probably tell you right now, get out there and enjoy every single day you can in global industrial civilization in this planet. Get out there and look at these beautiful fall leaves. Driving through a driving through a work of art. <laughs> 